G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and it's the first day of winter here in subtropical sunny Queensland and it's not very sunny today, we've got overcast conditions, it's about 14 degrees Celsius so not uncomfortable, quite beautiful actually, I just love gardening in winter in the subtropics because you don't have to sweat it out in the garden like you do all summer. I've got some brew kale here it's a cross between a brussels sprout and kale apparently and it produces these little heads like brussels sprouts except they are frilly like a kale leaf and uh, i'm gonna enjoy trying it but that's not what this video is about i'm gonna be planting them here in this bed but prior to the retrofitting that i've done to these beds I would not have been able to reach the center. So I can't reach the center of the bed from here. But because I've cut a keyhole here, pardon my back, I can now. I can reach every part of this large 2.4 by 2.4 meter bed. And I think that is fantastic. I've been loving the extra freedom I've had to be able to reach all parts of the bed. In this bed here I've got some lettuce growing and some kale and some mini broccoli. I haven't got anything in this bed yet. That one over there I've got some leeks growing in the background which you won't be able to see and some cabbages, some of the mammoth rock cabbages there, the purple ones. So I'm really into my winter crops at the moment. But in, as far as getting these beds built goes, it's probably best to hand you over to me seven days ago to give you the sort of background story on why I wanted to retrofit these old beds with these keyholes. So here's me seven days ago. I built these about 10 years ago and when I first built them in 2006 I was pretty new to gardening and all I wanted was some raised beds so that I could start my vegetable garden off with and I wanted to, to do it as easy as I could so I got some 2.4 metre uh, wide pieces of wood wooden sleepers from the hardware store I just pretty well whacked them together in a big square so it's 2.4 by 2.4 and thought that would be cool and it was. For the last 10 years we've grown some magnificent crops in these large raised beds. But one thing has always bugged me and that is I couldn't reach the damn center of the bed from the outside. So there was this two foot by two foot center piece in each of the beds that would just fill with weeds or I couldn't maintain the plants that went in there say if the tomatoes started sprawling without having to get into the bed and you know as a vegetable gardener you don't want to be getting into your vegetable garden because you start stamping down the soil compacting it down it's not good for veggies you want nice loose you know friable soil so that just bugged me for so long anyway I was watching YouTube and I was watching Patrick's channel One Yard Rev Revolution and if you haven't seen his channel which would be unlikely because he's one of the most popular gardeners on YouTube I've got a link below in the description you can go there but yeah Patrick's channel had a video on there or has a video about his large raised beds and they're similar to mine nice big and square except what he did was he cut a little keyhole like a little walkway only about a foot wide and about a meter into his bed and that little keyhole meant that he could access any part of the bed rather than having some void that was inaccessible brilliant i mean when i saw that video that day it was about 18 months ago I remember I, I said something to Patrick you know this is a fantastic idea but I remember it was one of those 
slap your forehead moments like why didn't I think of that but anyway like I said I was just really focused on getting a nice big raised garden bed and I didn't think about the access so what I had done over the years was put pot plants in the center I built it up I put a concrete block there and that butcher bird's just got a worm or something I put a concrete block there I put some bricks here and and I cover the 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 center as best as I could but inevitably it, it just still succumbed with weeds and grasses and it was just always such a pain now the wood in these beds are made from treated pine so what I did was I lined it with some builders plastic but anyway the sleepers that I did get are treated now with a citronella or some type of chemical that's that's friendly to kids and kids playgrounds and retaining walls uh, for vegetable gardens like this and it's supposed to be completely safe right that was a little bit long-winded I know from Mark seven days ago but thanks for hanging with me I'll keep it a little bit more brief what we'll move on to now is how I actually constructed these keyholes so I'll bring you in a bit closer show you the ins and outs uh, show you how they went together there was a few issues because I'm using new wood with old wood and some of the old wood is rotten and it's gone skew if and bowed out in places and uh, I'll voice over that and uh, show you exactly any issues that I came up with and why I use certain materials and what I did so let's move on with that so let's get into it I guess there's a shot of the veggie garden the orchard on the right down the back is where I keep my chickens and ducks and here's a good look at the shed there with the solar system on top and basically I got six planks of this micro pro type wood which is you know family kid friendly playground friendly school friendly type stuff it's called uh, Sienna I think it's made by a Canadian company well the invention is this is made in Australia uh, but originally I think the process of treatment came from Canada so I basically cut the first foot off because that's going to be used for the back bit of the keyhole and then I just cut that two meter length in half so I've got two equal halves that of course left in the six piles and I'd use two of those piles for each of the three beds to make up the keyhole top and bottom because my beds are two sleepers high then the process of digging began and that was not a fun job but a necessary one got to dig that hole out and make sure there's plenty of room so that uh, the wood can be placed in there and you can see that one particular bed I had a big concrete tile put in there that was to hold the pot plant on top and to try to stop weeds from growing through uh, that void in the middle there totally useless I just didn't want to dig more than I had to so I measured it out and once I got it I then cut out the holes for where the keyhole was going to be allowing for the foot plus of course the width of the sleeper which is 50 mil or five centimeters or two and a half inches and that would mean that the back bit of the sleeper would then slot in for a, that foot wide if you know what I mean you can see how bowed the wood was and how rotten it is but once you cut through into the middle uh, the wood was still pretty good on the inside so I'm not going to go changing all my wood around just to make it all look super new because that's just a complete waste of money but that's why retrofit with old and new wood like this works really well you need to make sure that it's level and uh, that's pretty easy you just dig it out to sort of eyeball method and then you use, use a bit of soil underneath hammer it down a bit uh, until you get it exactly level and that means then once you've got the bottom bit level it's a lot easier to work with and put the top on because you don't have to do as much measuring then the back bit just slots in and once I'm pretty positive I've got it all in place I can then take it off again and drill the holes now the last two beds I just put it left it in place and drilled the holes through using the eyeball method because you know it just saved time of taking it back out. I used coach screws here, they are fantastic. 130mm or 5 or 6 inches long. You can use the 150mm as well. 
these work particularly good, much better than wood screws, say the 70 mil wood screws, two or three inch wood screws, and they're no, no good because over time they work themselves out or they rot. Uh, these big coach screws, they're not only good for holding the wood together, but for bowed wood or where you're trying to pull wood into place, these things work a treat because you can't use a drill to get these in, you have to use them by hand. It takes quite a bit of force, especially once you're just at the end of tightening them up, and it actually does pull all the wood into alignment. So if you are a little bit out or you have to compensate for uh, bows in the wood, uh, coach screws really hold it in good and fast. And because I did that bottom work nice and level, it was just a matter of laying the top layer on top and then just going through again using two coach screws per sort of side. And then I secured the top to the bottom with some galvanized banding wire. That stuff's pretty cheap and, and, and really handy to have in the shed actually. And then I just did use some wood screws to screw that into just to keep the top and the bottom together so that it wouldn't move even though it's unlikely to move much. This just made it overall stronger. And yeah, it worked a treat. The next thing to do, of course, is just to backfill around and then mulch the bed on top. And I wanted to sort of do each bed holes and bowls before I moved on to the next one so I could even start planting straight away. I had a little mate that visited me for the last three days, uh, a butcher bird. They just hang around. I thought he was going to follow me inside at one point, hang around and get the worms and uh, they really get fond of you if you give them a few snacks while you're gardening. They tend to hang around. Uh, they're lovely to have around in the garden. Then of course I moved on to the next one. You can see in the background I've mulched that first bed. It has, it's good all ready for planting. This digging bit just drove me crazy but it was a necessity to do. Uh, this is me, had it, getting into the night, time to uh, pack it in, come back the next day, cut the hole in, and that wasn't a, you know, too bad of a process, it was pretty easy to cut through with one of those uh, jigsaw sort type cutters, or hand cutters, hand saws, battery operated. This bed turned out quite well, a little bit skew if, but uh, like I said, I'm working with old beds that have moved and are a bit crooked and you know, you can't get it perfect and you shouldn't sort of aim for perfection. Remember, this is just a keyhole and it's not something you're gonna display publicly. Um, this is just a vegetable garden bed, uh, but I think it came up pretty good. Once I finished backfilling that bed, then I just had to lay down my last of the matting I had placed down a whole heap of old uh, recycled tyre rubber matting and I just secured it down with those turf pegs that you can use for synthetic turf or synthetic tiles and just hammer them in. It holds it nice, nicely in place and really does a great job. I love that rubber matting even though it's quite expensive. I ended up getting that rubber matting from Bunnings. And that was the end of the job. I was pretty happy overall with how it turned out. Just pat that down and that's the seed sown. I didn't get many seeds out of that packet of brucale, you know, only about 15. So I've only just done the one row. Hopefully I'll get about four or five plants come up and uh, that should be interesting. Never tried them before. I love trying new plants. We'll see how it goes. I hope you enjoyed that video on cutting or retrofitting keyholes into old garden beds. But of course, the message really is if you're going to build big garden beds like this, so a, a few yards across by a few yards, don't forget the centre of the bed. Make that accessible from the beginning. Uh, and don't make the mistake that I did um, and do exactly what Patrick did in his video and when he built his beds, he built them specifically with a keyhole in mind so you can get to the centre of the bed. That is the way to do it. It's taken me a long time to get around to doing it. I'm glad I saw Patrick's video. It really uh, got me motivated. And, uh, but I would recommend if you're gonna build big beds like this, which are great, 
cut the keyhole in it. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget the website selfsufficientme.com. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Bye for now.